My name is Wendy, I'm from Google, and this is Lucas from NYU, and we're going to be talking to you about uh, securing your software supply chain using Graphius and in Toto. So Graphius is a um, artifact metadata storage system, and it also stores signatures for your cloud artifacts. And in Toto provides a framework, I'm sorry, is a framework that provides integrity and authenticity of steps performed to make software. So to start us out, um, Lucas is going to give us an overview of in Toto in a little bit more detail than this. Hello, everyone. Um, so before I'm going to talk about in Toto, I'm going to talk about how software is actually made. So typically, you have a series of steps. Start by writing code and check it, checking, in it, checking it into your version control system, something like Git. And <clears throat> then you take the sources and build them. There are various build tools, depending on what code you're developing. Ideally, you have some uh, quality assurance. Like you use the CI CD system and um, run tests there. And eventually, before you ship it to your user or you deploy it in your container cluster, you have to package it in a, the right format or um, containerize it. So what can go wrong in there? Uh, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Each of those steps in the software supply chain can be compromised. And also the software in transit can be compromised. And the software supply chain is a very attractive target for attackers because by compromising a, a single developer's machine or building machine, uh, attackers can target millions of end users. They can introduce malici malicious code such as backdoors, etc. And these things have happened repeatedly. You probably all have seen high profile <clears throat> disclosures of attacks in the software supply chain. So how can we fix this? There is already a bunch of very good um, point solutions. For instance, in the um, version control step where you develop your code, you can sign all of your commits using git commit signing. Um, you can take it a step further and use something that's called the reference state log. That's um, a system that's also, or an extension of Git that's also developed by the Intoto team and adds additional security uh, guarantees about authenticity of Git commits. Um, on your, <coughs> oops, sorry. On your build machine, you can use trust, uh, trusted platform module, you can use HSMs, you can also use reproducible builds, something that's um, coming more and more um, <coughs> to make sure that your binary is the same on every machine and therefore have guarantees that um, can add additional guarantees to your, your built software. And when you ship out your software, you can use transport, um, transport layer security. You can also use GPG to sign your binaries or your final software product. And in the container world, there are things like content trust or in, in Docker, there is Notary. Um, I think we're going to hear about that later in, in this week. So <clears throat> um, is the software, secure, sec the software supply chain fixed? Well, partially. There are still the gaps between the steps. So even if you sign all your commits, you don't really have a, um, an overarching um, definition of who's authorized. You need something like a PKI. Um, if you have reproducible builds, you trust on the fact that the code that goes into your build machines um, is sane. And so there are still several problems even if you use all of those point solutions. And that's why we have developed Intoto. And um, these are the things that we want to accomplish. We want to make sure that, or we want to be able to verifiably define all the steps in the software supply chain. We want to verifiably define who's authorized to perform each of the individual steps. And we want to guarantee that everything happened according to that uh, project definition and nothing else. 
in total provides two types of metadata. Uh, the most crucial or the, the first part of metadata that you're gonna define is something that we call a layout. It's the project definition. It uh, lists all of the steps that you um, want to have in your software supply chain, like the coding step, uh, or it's, it might be a tagging step where you tag your release, building step, testing step, packaging or containerizing step, and so on. Um, you put all of those into the layout, and then you say who's allowed to perform those steps. We use cryptographic keys, so you define the public portion of the key of a developer or a builder, or it also can be a machine, um, and you add it to the step in the layout. And then you define the artifacts of each step. Uh, you say what should come out of a given step, we call that product, and what should go in, into um, probably a subsequent step, which we call material. And uh, finally, we have a little rule language where we say, <clears throat> okay, this product that came out of this, let's say the, the versioning step, should be the material for the building step. And in order to be able to, okay, one thing that I forgot, you have a root of trust, you sign this piece of layout, uh, this piece of metadata um, by your master key, the project owner's key, can also be several keys uh, to have a threshold, and that's shipped out alongside your software. And in order to have evidence that all of those steps were carried out um, according to the definition, you have all of your developers, your builders, we call those people functionaries or those entities, you have them provide a or create also a piece of metadata, which we call link metadata, um, that lists all the artifacts that were used or created by a given step. And this piece of metadata is signed by the private page, a portion of the, of the cryptographic key of, of the functionary. And the links together with the layout are shipped out with the final product and then we have an in total verification routine that verifies all of the links against the layout um, using the final, uh, the final software product that you want to deploy or um, ship out. Okay, um, that's all for Intoto, and Wendy's gonna talk about Trophias. So now we've, we've just talked about a lot of metadata. Um, a secure software supply chain produces a lot of metadata. Um, and so what do we do with that metadata? Uh, this is the motivation behind Graphius, where at each step we have at each step of your CI CD process, you can push stuff into a structured API that is common across wherever you're getting the metadata from. So if you have multiple builders, your um, build provenance would look the same for, for both of them and you can use that data then in a reliable way without worrying about translating from one format to another. Um, and so we have um, build test, um, you see in the middle we have scanners, so you can have a licensed scanner, a vulnerability scanner, um, putting metadata into Graphius, and this will help you decide whether the thing that you're building is safe to deploy. Um, so to give a little more context in the Graphius API, we have two resource types. Um, one is called notes, and these are sort of the thing that exists in a context-insensitive way. So if you think in the case of vulnerabilities, this might be a CVE that just exists and information about where, uh, where it could be found, which packages are, are affected. And then we have occurrences that are actually referencing places in your artifact. So in your container, which package contains this vulnerability? Um, and the occurrences always reference a note. So to have an occurrence, you must have a note. Um, and the we do a bit of, Namespacing for these, so um, you can have your notes and occurrences live in different projects. So uh, you can see on the on your right, um, we have all these notes over here, and they're in provider projects. And then here we have occurrences, and they would be in a user project. So let's talk about the different types of structured metadata that we currently support. Um, we support package, which just talks about or describes which packages were installed in your artifact. 
vulnerabilities, which I just used for the example, so what vulnerabilities are in these packages. Um, discovery lets, um, if you have someone doing some sort of scanning for you, it gives them an in a way to indicate whether your artifact has been scanned. Um, because you might have a difficult time telling the difference between no vulnerabilities in this thing or not yet scanned. Um, builds, you can learn what, your, what source your project was built from, who built it, what was the version of the builder, um, and really make sure that people aren't just pushing stuff from their dev boxes, um, that you're following your uh, build process. And then image um, is specific to containers. Uh, and it gives information about what the base image for this container was, along with what layers um, got built on top of that. Attestations are sort of a very strong um, piece of the Graphius API. This allows you to sign off on things. So um, even if we don't have a schema for a specific um, type of metadata, like QA to sign off, um, your QA team can create an attestation saying, yes, we think this is good to go and verify it. Um, and you can do the same thing with your build information. If the build, if this thing was built in a way that you were okay with deploying, then you create the attestation. Um, you can create a vulnerability policy and say, yes, this thing is clear of the vulnerabilities that I don't want to deploy. Um, so create an attestation saying that. And then finally, deployment um, lets you track what was deployed, where it was deployed, and by whom. And the helpful thing here is if you have some information that comes back later after you've deployed, so a new vulnerability is discovered, you can compare this against your deployment history information in Graphius and check if, if you're impacted in your running production environment. Um, so, the way we, um, the, the collaboration between Graphius and Intoto um, has the expectation that we would query the data from Graphius um, that would, and translate it to the Intoto metadata layout, which is a little bit more generic than Graphius, um, and then run Intoto verification using Graphius metadata, and then have Intoto push um, an attestation into the Graphius server. Thanks. Um, yeah, so as Wendy has pointed out, it seems natural to kind of marry these two projects. Graphius provides a very well-defined API where you can store or push metadata to and cure it from, and it is well integrated in the cloud ecosystem, and in Toto, really works on the individual steps of the supply chain, and it's agnostic to the steps, so it can be used for anything that you have in your supply chain. So we have a little diagram here um, that basically explains what Wendy um, already said, or visualizes what, visualizes what Wendy just said. Um, we use all the metadata that we um, had to define the Intoto software supply chain and also the evidence that was um, generated when carrying out the supply chain steps. And we run the Intoto verification routine and produce a, a um, piece of metadata that works with Grafias um, that just says, okay, verification passed or verification failed. We push that to the Graphias API where it can be um, fetched by any sort of admission controller that you would use in your container cluster in order to um, grant or to deny deployment. Yeah, um, I'd also like to mention uh, Santiago Torres, who's the brain behind Intoto and unfortunately, unfortunately couldn't make it here. And also Justin Capas, professor at NYU and supervisor of the Intoto project. He's here in the room, so um, if you see him, he's that guy. <laughs> uh, you can shoot questions at him. I'll be around. If you're interested in Intoto, there is a bunch of uh, demos available, also about the little su supply chain that I, I showed or we showed in our slides. Um, fork us on GitHub send us emails, contribute, um, yeah. 
We also have, um, if you're interested in getting involved in the Graphase community, we have every other week a community call. You'll see all these happy faces there. These are the um, Google team members. Um, and then you can join our mailing list. And uh, Kelsey Hightower wrote a demo um, last fall using the admission controller to block deployments based on attestations. So if you want to take a look at that, um, how that would work, you can look there. Um, and I'll also give a plug that we're holding a Graphius meetup this afternoon. So if you are interested, feel free to come. Uh, any questions? <laughs> yes. The question was, are the in toto um, definitions composable? Is that roughly right? Okay. What do you mean by composable? Uh, like, could, could you have like, uh, several of these uh, in toto probic definitions uh, chain each other, so if you have one chain reference and another one? Okay, so if we can um, have multiple in toto layouts or project definitions, um, and put them together or have, yeah, actually that's something we do. We um, call those sub layouts. So in any given supply chain layout, you can um, have individual steps that themselves are layout of other projects um, so that we can also deal with third party dependencies. And ideally, um, at some point, a lot of projects will use in total layouts to define their supply chains and provide evidence about the steps of their supply chains so that any supply chain can integrate uh, third party projects and also verify them within Toto. Thanks. Any other questions? Can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Okay, the question is how big of a project is it to deploy Graphius um, to the point that it's useful in an organization? Um, so I think we have, um, I think Tobias has been working on um, Graphius uh, for his own organization. We have a few people who are sort of in the early stages of um, getting it working. Um, I, Tobias, can I put you on the spot? Do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about your experience? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we are currently looking into using Graphios for um, uh, proving our supply chain. So we were actually looking at building something like Graphios for ourselves. Um, but uh, then uh, last fall, it was, um, Graphios was announced. So we have uh, uh, contributed uh, uh, some, some of the stuff that is needed to make this work in production, like uh, uh, Postgres database backend, for example. So we are uh, in a like a prototype phase, but we are, are running Graphias uh, uh, in our organization. Um, but also, you use Graphias in Google. Yes. So that's a <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to talk about the non-Google experience. So we, we do use it in Google. Um, and I think the Having the, the standard metadata types has been very useful for tracking metadata about containers and, and that sort of thing. So Google is definitely um, working with Graphius and, and using it too. Should I tell something about Intoto? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so I think you also asked about Intoto or, yeah. Um, well, we have the reference implementation, which is fully functional and tested and um, released and, uh, as open source code. And we are working together with uh, 
um, operating system communities. We're working with Debian. We're trying to make their, or we are in the process of making their reproducers produce or generate link metadata. Uh, we are having in total right now integrated in a company that's also somewhere out there, I think. <laughs> um, we are talking with Arch Linux, OpenSUSE. Um, yeah, we are trying to have their package managers, their system package man managers perform in total verification on system packages that are installed. So we, yeah, we are um, going in various directions where we're trying to to tell people that this this is something to, that can be used and should be used, um, and we're excited about having more people on board to to use it. I think there was a question over there. Um, so the Critis is still under, um, still being developed internally, so the, there's no code that has been created yet. Um, however, the, a lot of what Critis is doing is the work in the admission controller, and so this is stuff that's very easy to do um, following, following Kelsey's example. Um, I think the more difficult part comes around the policy language and like how to um, ask for those attestations. So there's, there's work going on on that, it's just not open yet, unfortunately. That was a question over there. Uh -huh. Okay, the question was to elaborate on the root of trust. Um, okay, that's a good question. So, um, the, the root of trust is basically um, a key that's used to sign one layout. It's the root of trust within the in total verification. So, um, this key that signs the layout um, is used to trust all the keys that provide uh, or that sign link metadata for individual steps. Um, it doesn't have to be, so that means that there, that in Intoto is a sort of public key infrastructure, so um, all the keys that are trusted for a given step of the supply chain are shipped out with the layout, so you don't have to handle anything extra with uh, GPG key rings on your system or whatever. Um, what hap your question was also what happens if the, those keys need to be rotated. Um, that's something that is not really handled by Intoto. So if you need to, um, if you need to rot rotate keys, you might want to use another project, something like TUF, um, the, the update framework, um, that you can use to ship out your, to like ship out your in totals, um metadata and the, the software product, and that also handles things like key rotation. Um, does that somehow answer your question? More or less. Justin, do you want to add something to that? Yeah. So Justin was saying that Intoto makes it possible to rotate the keys for, um, like not the root keys, but the keys that are in the layout. Um, but if you want to rotate the root of trust, which signs the layout, you would need something like the update framework that integrates well with Intoto. More questions? All right, um, thanks for coming and Thank for listening. You.